We're going to start with a um, side control escape first. So he's got inside control. All right. I need to get into this right away. So I'm going to get my frame on his trap and my elbow in. I don't want my arm up here because I don't want him to push me into any kind of choke positions. Um, I don't, if I can avoid it, I don't want my arms to be on the outside. I want to have inside position. Okay. This arm needs to be kind of grabbing at his kidney and posting above his hip with my elbow across. All right. Reason for that is I'm posting on my hand, he's going to drop his hip into my hand. And just, and a lot of cases, either break your wrist, sprain it, or certainly get you to move right away. All right, I want to lock this so he comes in, right? Now, um, I want to make an angled bridge here. Um, if I bridge both feet straight up, when I come back down, he's still going to be there. All right, I need to move his body. All right, now there's a couple ways we can do it. If we're trying to escape to get, you know, do an elbow escape to get our guard back, I'm going to angle with my knee up. So I angle out, and I'm bridging, and I'm starting to slide my knee through, okay? With this, you may find times where you have to bridge with both feet. Whatever I do, I don't want to open my feet like really wide. I need to be going the proper direction, all right? So you can just continue to bridge with one and keep your knee up to keep him from just trying to step into mount easily, all right? Or if I have to, if you feel the need to, sometimes getting out of these positions, you're going to have to risk it, all right? Um, but I need to move his body so that I can get my underhook here. All right, so we're going to try to come up on him. All right, so he's pressuring in here. I'm trying to keep his weight off of me. I'm going to angle out. I can keep the knee up if I want. Bridge. And I'm going to pummel here. Now, when I pummel, I'm going to, even if he comes back down on me, I'm going to shuck this arm here, get my head to the center. And see how I have my legs in that S position. I'm going to work on switching my left leg underneath my right in this case. So I'm here. My elbow is underneath me. And then I'm going to switch and come up. Don't lock your hands when you're underneath them. It's critical that I get my arm underneath my ribs so that I can come up. So what I mean is when I come up here, just like the highest position that we're doing when we're drilling, this elbow needs to come underneath me. So it needs to come underneath my body. If it's out here or if I'm grabbing, it's going to be very difficult with his weight on top of me to come up. I'm going to get stuck. So I want to get this in with that underhook. I can even slide the underhook to his leg. All right. And once I have that, I can loop or hug the hip. And I'm going to pass and come up. Okay. Um, make sure you get the arm. It cannot be away from your body. All right. Any questions? Let's see it again. Yeah. Get those frames in. Okay, go ahead. I'm going to angle, bridge, tumble. That elbow comes underneath me. He can come on with a bunch of pressure again. Shuck that arm, and I'm going to pass the legs. Here. Okay. Now, once I get this leg position, I can work on getting behind this ankle. That's going to help us too. All right. This is going to make it easier for me to kind of keep his weight down. All right. Don't worry about anything other than that. We're just trying to get up right now. Um, I want to kind of burn it into your memory what we need to do. There's a million ways to do this. This is just one, and we're going to drill that um, for time today. So instead of doing two minutes like we did on Tuesday, I think I'm just going to make it one minute rounds. And we'll just keep cycling through. Uh, switch sides when you get your turn again. All right? All right, get your partners. Uh, Two questions that that, that uh, Jacob asked and then and Dave asked. We'll, we'll get to that one here in a minute. Um, but Jacob asked uh, about what, how did you word that again? It was about keeping your knee up. Okay. So the the reason I showed it that way and us using like a pseudo mount block, um, I do not ever want. I just don't believe in this. So I'm just going to show you this. So um, I don't. And the reason I'm saying this is I was watching what Randy taught the other day too, and it was a good point. Um, if I'm just net or you know careless here, and I'm just bridging, you can just step over at any point. Okay, so I want to make sure that you guys know that we have to be cognizant of that. 
So I need to keep something up there, all right? So I've never been a proponent of this old school stuff where you stick your leg up like this, because you can't move. And he could attack my foot. There's just a bunch of stuff he can do here. And I'm not very able to just make adjustments. I'm kind of locking my foot in position. And it's kind of lazy. I need to be feeling for this hip, okay? So keep it up, but I'm not locking it here. All right, so if I want to do this, I got to be mindful here. I can keep it up, it's still angle, it's still bridge here. But I'm going to let this down. I don't need to keep this here while I'm trying to get my underhook. Because it's going to take away, if I'm trying to get this escape, it's going to take away from what I'm trying to do. I need to keep it up when we're here, okay? So he's going to be tight with his hip, his, his knee here. So tight, yeah. So I just don't want to make it easy for him to just stick that leg across. I need to be feeling for that. So I'm going to angle. I'm going to bridge here. Now I'm in my position. My elbow's underneath me. And then I'm going to slide down to the leg here, OK? So I wanted to make sure I touched on that because we didn't touch on it too much the other day. Um, you can bridge without putting that knee up there. Just be mindful if you're not paying attention there. He just could just step over. All right. Um, is that kind of what we were thinking? All right. Um, and then the other thing, uh, uh, Dave was asking about what if they put too much pressure on you over, like kind of turn, leaning over your, your head so Like over the other shoulder, right? right. So, so really lock on me, all right? And like push me over this way. Right, so I'm turning away, right? That's what you're talking about. Right. You're right, I'm never moving, so it's not gonna happen. So I still have my frame in here, but I need to take this and cup, right? And remember, I need to bridge this way. And then what I'm doing is I'm trying to create that space to get this off. Okay. So I could be here, I might also have to do this, okay? I have to get this shoulder off. So instead of going here in this case, I'd probably rather actually go here. All right, so he's pressuring, right? I'm going to angle out. I'm going to bridge, and then I'm going to pull this grip and then get my frame in, try to get him off of me. Question. Now I'm angled again. Bridge again. And Question come up. for you, though. When you're in that position, depending on how heavy they are, how big, to create space, I have to go this way. Would you see anything wrong, though, with bumping your hips to get him to create space to... to if you're talking about just bumping my hips up, I'm never going to move it. At the same time that you're trying to move them? To create well, I need to bridge, not bump my hips. Because if I go straight up, he's going to land straight back in the same spot. Because like with Matt, he's too heavy. Like if yeah, he if Matt gets on you in side control and he locks in and we let him get that far, you're not moving. Especially if he turns your head, you're not going to move. There's just too much of a difference in size. You, you have to inch it out and get that position back. Once we get to a point where he's not smashing my face, then we can move. Okay, but I have to go with what he's doing. If he's got my face turned all the way, I'm facing the wall over here, I'm not going this way. This is not gonna happen. All right, does that make sense? So I just wanted to make sure we touched on that and then we're gonna get into the next thing. We're gonna drill some guard passes today um, from like that headquarters or um, yeah, headquarters, one leg in, one leg out position. Split squat position as it's also called. So here. So. The uh, reason I'm saying this is the tournament the, uh, last weekend, someone not to be named, um, that, that's pretty decent at guard passing, but for whatever reason, we kept entering this way, just straight into his, his legs. So in here or in here, giving him all kinds, just trying to hip into him. And I'm giving him all kinds of grips, whether it's my pant legs, my sleeves, you know, I saw lapels being grabbed. We're either gonna make it an entry to the side or we're going to make an entry in the middle if we go in the middle it's one in one out okay so like this this position here because i have a bunch of different things that i can do from here all right i've got i've got a knee cut as long as he doesn't have a knee shield in here all right once i get my underhook like very easy all right i've got grab the lapel and the knee Come up, big kick, X pass. All right. If he starts to bring the knee in, I could go to the pant leg and I could go uh, like a uh, back step or. Uh, so um, I'm going to grab here or catch his head. Bump. 
launch them. That's what I want. Right? I could pass there. All those are options. Here, I don't even have Torando. All right? I, I can't. If I'm going to go Torando pass, I'm going to get a grip. So I'm going to push his knees up. Right? Make my moves. Okay? So what we're going to work on is entering this split squat position. How do I get there? Grab the pants, the hip here, or I can push the knee and the hip here. All right. Now, if I wanted that X pass, it might make a lot of sense for me to get that grip on the entry. All right. That way, I don't have to try to get it when his knee's already on the mat. Okay. Today, um, we're in a knee cut from here. All right. So I want to get here. I don't want him to bring this knee over. So my arm's gonna come in here, all right? Knee starting to almost come through. I'm looking for the underhook, all right? I can use this grip if I need it. See how he's folded over here? So I'm gonna come up a little bit, pummel, and then I'm shooting through, okay? So we're gonna look for that knee cut off that entry. And I wanna drill this for time as well too. So we'll do both sides. Here, I want my underhook, knee through, finish the side control, all right? I want to spend most of the effort on getting in the position and, and shooting through, okay? We don't have to take it through the whole realm of going through each finish. I want to work on that entry and getting into my underhook and, and hitting that knee cut. If he's threatening this, I don't want a knee cut through this because I clearly don't have an underhook. Even if I kind of had an underhook, let me get in here a little bit. Get your knee in there. If I un if I cut through this, there's so much space here. Right. Okay. So what happens if he's right? If I don't like this, I'm going to come back up, and I'm looking for that underhook. Gotcha. From here, it's boom, knee through. Okay. So it's really more about the knee, not necessarily the underhook. Un underhook, huge. but it's more right. about the knee in that case. Under well, I have to have the underhook. If I don't, I'm if the guy's good, I'm not going to land it. Okay. All right. Next thing is the knee has to get to the mat, okay. all right? Once those two things happen, I should be able to get it. I should be in a better position to get it than him. Okay. All right, any other questions? All right, get your partners.